Hi friends, I'm Abby and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at anticipated releases for October, November and December. So chatting through 10 books that I am looking forward to that are coming out in the final quarter of 2023. How are we already looking at the final quarter? I do not know, but we are. So I will forewarn you, um, although we're talking about autumn and winter, it is very hot in the UK here today. It has been like, 30 degrees all week, which I think is like high 80s, 90s in Fahrenheit. So it's, it's rather warm. So all the windows are open. So there might be some like excess noise coming in from outside. Uh, and I was planning to film yesterday. I wanted to film, I was like ready for it. But we've had that like escaped convict prisoner on the loose around here. So we've literally had helicopters circling, but supposedly got him yesterday. So uh, it seems a little bit quieter right now. I say that as as one starts flying over as one starts flying over but literally they were circling yesterday it was a lot so starting in october uh i have four books coming out it looks as though october and november i have quite a few and then december that i really could not find that much of, or things that were really interesting to me so i have at the beginning of october there is the next Brandon Samson secret project. So You Mean the Nightmare Painter, which came out for people that backed the Kickstarter in July, comes out with the traditional publishers at the beginning of October. So this was secret project number three. This, I feel like I'm excited for this one. Like I'm, I haven't been too fussed about reading so the magician, not, no, the, the whatever to survive in medieval England. That one hasn't really appealed to me. The reviews haven't attracted me to it, but I've been very attracted to Yumi and the Nightmare Painter because that one sounds more my speed. Uh, I, I feel like it's slightly romantic, it's cosmere. Uh, so that one comes out for those of us that are just getting the normal editions, which might be more common for those of us in the UK because it was so, so expensive to get them shipped here. Uh, however beautiful they are. And then Secret Project 4 is coming out at the beginning of October for those that have backed the Kickstarter. And I will leave the name unnamed because I know that that's very controversial, even though the name is like all over the internet and like you just go onto Amazon and the name comes up. Uh, but okay, I just won't mention it. And uh, I believe that this one is again Cosmere and that's all I know about it. But there, if you're interested in the secret projects, there's more of them. Then on the 3rd of October, Alex E. Harrow has another book coming out. This one is called Starling House. So based on the cover, the vibes look gothic. The vibes look very, very autumnal. I, I really, I really like the cover. I, li I like the sort of dark purpley tones of it. Purple is one of my favourite colours. I really enjoy purple as a colour. A grim and gothic new tale from author Alex E. Harrow about a small town haunted by secrets that can't stay buried and the sinister house that sits at the crossroads of it all. And we're following a main character who is visiting and I think she's staying at Starling House and uncovering the mysteries that are there and the sinister forces converging at Starling House. By the way, I will leave all of the Goodreads descriptions below for any of the books. If you want to look into more detail about them, then that is there. And I also have a Blackwell's affiliate link, uh, also always linked down below if you're after any UK editions or US editions, uh, and they ship internationally for free, if any of those links interest you. So this one I'm intrigued by. I feel as though I've had a mixed reception with Alexi Harrow. Like I keep reading her books because I'm interested in the premises, but it's not as though I've ever loved any of her books. I read The Ten Thousand Doors of January, and that's probably my favourite. I, I, I then also read The Once and Future Witches, which I was fine with. I felt like it was a bit too, there was too much in the middle. I wasn't a massive fan of the novellas, so I don't really know why I keep pursuing and going, but I, I, do, I do just keep going with her books for whatever reason. It's like, I'm like, one of these days, one of these books is going to be five stars. Like one of them will be with these premises, but it hasn't happened yet. But that's not to say that it won't happen. But right now, everything's been quite average -y. Then on the 10th of October, Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare is coming out. So this is her first adult fantasy book and it is not in the Shadowhunter world. So I have read Cassandra Clare's 
Shadow Hunter universe. I've read quite a few of them. I've read them for many years now. Like I probably started that series, what, 10 odd years ago. So I've just been reading them now as they come out. Uh, they're quite formulaic and angsty and in fun. Typically they're quite fun with some very annoying, like not tropes, but like grievances that c repeatedly come up. Like she seems to love incest. Don't know why don't understand but anyway this is her new one two outcasts find themselves at the center of world altering change in the start of a riveting fantasy series but okay in this one we're setting some in a fantasy world uh and we're following kel who is an orphan and he is the body double for the prince um and then we're also following lynn who is uh, part of a small community who still possess magic in this world and then there is a third assassination attempt which bring these two characters together i i'm intrigued but i don't know if i would read it straight away because i know from from reading her books in the past that there is always a cliffhanger there is always a cliffhanger without fail so i just feel as though i'll just wait and see see and, and maybe read the whole series when it's all out i feel like that might be the way to go for it then on the 24th of October, A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber comes out. This is the third and final book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series, which I've been reading. It is a fun YA series set in the Caravel world. It's one of those sorts of books that you can read in like a day. And I don't read that many books in a day, but these are the sort of books you can read in a day, in a sitting. They're very unputdownable. They're very sort of ro romance-led, that the, the romantic tension is there. There's twists and turns. They've got different magical creatures in them. They're sort of fairy tale-esque and they're very compulsively readable, I would say, about Stephanie Garber. If you're interested in reading the Once Upon a Broken Heart series, might as well get on it now because that third book is coming out very, very shortly and then you can binge the whole thing. And I feel as though that might be the, one of the best ways to go about reading the series, is just binging the whole thing and you could probably do it in, I was about to say weekend, but that might be a little bit ambitious, but maybe if you're a quicker reader than I am, you could do it in a weekend. Right, so that's October. So moving into November, on the 7th of November, Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros com comes out. This is the sequel to Fourth Wing, which came out earlier this year. And I don't think I had even like registered Fourth Wing when I was filming my releases for, what was it, April. And now the second book is already coming out. So that's quite a fast turnaround. And Fourth Wing just seemed to take the whole bookish community by storm. It is a, I would describe it as like, divergent but with dragons we're following this main character what's her name violet and she is entered into this training academy to become a dragon rider um, although she's been training all her life to be, to be a scribe her mother who is high up in the military says no you can't do that you've got to go into the dragon rider quadrant uh which is a very beautiful be beautiful brutal is it which is a very brutal uh, environment where many people are dying as they are training to become dragon riders and it's all with this rising threat of war from a surrounding from the surrounding countries uh, and then there is an angsty relationship as well it's fun I, i'm definitely intrigued to see uh where it goes next uh, and see what happens with the rest of the series uh fourth wing was very fun and, and bingeable i don't think it's been like my favorite book of the year or anything but i enjoyed it but uh definitely not as hyped as i think a lot of people are for this release but i'm still gonna read it i'm still probably going to read it uh, and uh, hopefully it will live up to everybody's expectations because i feel as though the expectations now for this book are like up here uh based on how everyone felt about fourth wing also on the 7th of november check and mate by ali hazelwood comes out so i have read through well i've read pretty much all of ali hazelwood's books so far uh, all of her books to date have been uh, romances centered around the science and educational sphere uh, and this is her first ya romance outside of the educational sphere. So everything else has been adult. So she is breaking away from her typical mold. And I am wondering how that would work. I don't really read YA romance. If I read a romance, it's typically an adult one. And I prefer the ones now that are people that are closer to my own age. Like I tried to read a college, college well, university it was American, so college university one today. And I was just like, I don't think I can do this. 
I don't think I can do this. So I don't know how this would go, but maybe this will change my mind. I haven't looked too much into the pot. I mean, assuming that there is chess involved. And I did really like the TV show that was on Netflix, The Queen's Gambit, that I enjoyed. I'm imagining it's The Queen's Gambit, but with romance or more romance. Uh, but yeah, Mallory Greenleaf begrudgingly agrees to play one final charity chess tournament and inadvertently wins against the world champion. And I feel like it's going to be their romance. <laughs> the beginning of November is busy. Then on the 9th of November, there are another two releases. So there is Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. This one I haven't been so interested in per personally. I think there are a lot of people that are very interested in it, but I haven't read Legends and Lattes and I haven't really had that much interest in reading it. I'm sorry, all of the cute cozy fantasy lovers but i just don't know if cozy's really for me i need i think i prefer steaks it's just it's just not something i gravitate towards really but there we go this is a prequel to legends and lattes when an injury throws a young battle hungry orc off her chosen path she may find that what we need isn't always what we seek high fantasy first loves and second hand books so I think a lot of people will be very excited to read it, especially those that loved Legends and Lattes, uh, and it will be probably quite charming and probably quite happy, I would expect. Also, apparently coming out on the 9th of November, and when I say apparently, I mean apparently, is The Year of the Locust by Terry Hayes. So this book, I don't know if it's like had that much acclaim. Well, I don't know if Terry Hayes had that much acclaim outside of the UK, but in 2013, Terry Hayes released a book called I Am Pilgrim, which is like a, a, a thriller following uh, a guy that used to be part of like MI6. And there's like loads of different cases that are going on around the world and he's piecing it all together and actually all these cases interlink. And it sort of combines like real world politics with this sort of spy-like case. It is my partner's like favorite book of all time. He's read it multiple times. I've read it once and I've, really thoroughly enjoyed it. It's like 800 pages, but it's 800 pages that are very, very bingeable. So I'd recommend it if that is your genre. It's not typically mine. Uh, I'm typically in the fantasy genre and this is real world, but it was really, really well done. So he released that in 2013. And then since then, there has been this book called The Year of the Locust, which has been scheduled for release every year. Like since about 2015, this book has been scheduled for release. And every year Amazon has like a date up and it will be like May and then it will change it to December and then it will change it again. And it will keep repeatedly changing it. Uh, and it's gone on for years. Like literally it has gone on for years where they have this up and they change the date when it gets to the date. Like the week before, the day before they change it and your pre-order gets canceled and it just keeps rolling. So anyway, I looked up and it now has a full blurb and it's they've changed the cover from what's the, the placeholder cover that's been there for years and it looks like it's actually going to come out. And I think this is like the thr thriller police detective version of like George R.R. R. Martin or... or um, Patrick Roth Rothfuss in the sense that people have been waiting for this book for years and there's been no news and now it's potentially coming. So yeah, this goes to release is currently 9th of November and I feel like this time it might happen. I don't know if it's going to live up to everybody's expectations now though, considering it's taken so long for it to be released. But you know, he's finally got there. So it's a new thriller in this we're falling Kane who works with CIA and has access to everything, all information, and he is travelling to Pakis to the borders of Pakistan, Iran and Afghanistan to exfiltrate a man with vital information, but things go awry. So we'll see if it actually comes out. We'll see if it actually is a release that's gonna happen. Because if so, it's a great present for my boyfriend. Huh? And then finally in November Defiant by Brandon Sanderson is coming out, the fourth and final book 
in the Skyward series. So we do have some finales that are coming out. Uh, so again, if you have not started the Skyward series, now is the perfect time to get on with this and like start reading it ahead of this final book's release. This is Brandon Sanderson's YA sci-fi series following a main character, Spencer, who has been raised on this planet that is constantly under bombardment by this alien force called the Krell. And she wants to train to be a fighter pilot like her father. However, her father has been deemed a coward following a battle like 10, 15 years before the start of the book. Uh, and so she has always been denied this privilege of becoming a fighter pilot. It, it is following those events. It's a lot of fun. That is finally wrapping up. Uh, I've been rereading the series. So I've reread the first one. I've got the second one to read later on this month in September. And then I will continue and read for the first time Cytonic and the novellas ahead of Defiance release. So excited. Uh, it's nice that all of these series that I've been reading are now getting wrapped up. Speaking of wrapping up series, the fifth and final book in the Guild series by Raven Kennedy is coming out in December. It is the only book that I could find that I was particularly interested in for December. Um, it comes out It comes out on the 7th of December. And yet again, I'm going to be very happy to wrap up another series before the end of the year. The Guild series is following a main character, Oren, who at the start of the book is sort of the prisoner slash pet of King Midas. Um, so it's King Midas retelling where everything that he touches turns to gold. And then it goes quite a lot away from that, that there's many different elements that come in uh, as the series goes on. I, I've i enjoyed it, the series for the most part. There's like, it's not been a favorite fantasy romance series, but the third book, I really, really like. The third book's been my favorite. That's been the high for me. Um, and I'm definitely intrigued to see how it's going to end and where it's going to, how it's going to all wrap up, how it's all going to come to a fruition, hopefully. So those are all of the releases that I found that are coming out in the next three months. Uh, let me know if there are any other books that you particularly are really excited for that are coming out uh, over October, November or December. If there's anything that I've missed that I really need to put onto my radar because it, it, it definitely happens. It's definitely very easy to uh, miss things. That however much you hunt through the internet, there will definitely be a book that comes out that I was not aware was coming out and suddenly it is the next big thing. Uh, there we go. There are all of the books that I am anticipating for the next three months. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my future videos. Bye.